What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me for today's video. So I really wanted on the run up to Christmas to share some of my top tips for a zero waste Christmas. Christmas is naturally a time of excess and consumption and really that is exactly what these big corporations and the advertising industry wants from us. They want us to buy as much as possible so they play on our emotions and they play on the guilt factor. But with a couple of top tips you can make sure your Christmas is not only a ton more eco-friendly but it is also kinder to your bank account. So if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also please don't forget to hit subscribe before we get started so that you don't miss any more of my Zero Waste Christmas series and let's get into the video. So my first tip is to skip on the wrapping paper. I think this has become more common knowledge as the years have gone on that the majority of wrapping paper is actually not recyclable, especially if it is shiny, if it's made from any kind of foil. So the ways we can get around the wrapping paper situation is just to get creative. So I actually have a craft box where I gather together bits of ribbon and laces and any kind of fabrics that I come across that I think might be a really good option for wrapping at Christmas time. Now, obviously this can apply throughout the year as well. It doesn't have to be just Christmas specific. And you can also wrap with fabric and also with brown craft paper without using any tape. So you skip the environmental impact of non-recyclable tape, of wrapping paper, and of these Christmassy type ribbons that realistically most people are going to throw out. And keep your eyes peeled for my zero waste wrapping video where I will be sharing all my tips and tricks with you on how you can wrap your gifts in the most beautiful and stunning Christmassy way and completely zero waste. Around Christmas time, you've probably been in the shops and you've probably seen the absolute influx of sweet treats that just appear on the shelves. Like suddenly at Christmas time, we all just become little sugar craving elves. That's me all year round. I don't know about you. So the temptation in the shops around this time of year sometimes can be a little bit too much. So one easy way that you can avoid going to bed one morning like your perfectly normal self and the next waking up like Scott Calvin from Santa Claus, if you've seen it, you know what I mean, is to actually avoid those shop-bought products and make your own. Your own baking is also going to be a lot more wholesome. It's not going to contain all those shop-bought processed additives and the taste is bar none. And I know this because Danny is the fussiest eater on the planet and he eats my baking. So yes. So some of my favourite treats around Christmas time to make are gingerbread men and mince pies and Christmas cake and I actually do have a recipe for mince pies on my channel if you'd like to check that out I'll leave a link in the description box. Believe me, if you have mince pies or if you have gingerbread men all rolled out, pre-rolled, pre-cut and ready to go in your freezer you are going to look like a boss when you have visitors come over and you have freshly baked gingerbread men coming out of the oven. Yes, I'm giving away my secrets but hey, I love you. Okay, let's talk about food at Christmas time. Remember that the shops are only going to close for maybe two days and realistically there's probably going to be a 24 hour petrol station that's open somewhere if you run out of milk by chance, which is unlikely because you probably stopped up. But if we are going to sit down and think about how we can be less wasteful at Christmas time, I think we need to get organized. We need to sit down with a pen and paper or your notes on your phone and you need to think about a couple of things. A. How many people are you expecting for your dinner? And B. How many visitors are you expecting over the Christmas season? It means you are less likely to go out there and stock up as if the world is about to end. Which leads me on to my next point. If you do end up with a ton of leftovers, try and avoid the bin as much as possible. If you have a ton of veg and you feel like you're just never going to get around to eating it fresh, then cook it and freeze it. Food waste is an absolutely horrendous problem as things stand and that only exacerbates around Christmas time. So there are ways that we can combat it, we just need to get ahead of the game and think and plan a little bit more than maybe we have in previous years. Next on our list for a more zero waste Christmas is to make your own Christmas crackers. Now I have seen eco versions of Christmas crackers in the shop but again I don't think there's anything like making your own. They're a little bit tricky to get the hang of once you begin to make them and I did bring in the troops 
have to say I did bring in mom to help me make these so if you have an extra pair of hands that would be really helpful but by making your own you are avoiding plastic packaging you are avoiding junk let's be real whatever comes inside your Christmas cracker is usually just a wasteful plastic toy that has zero purpose once it's been cracked and that's it so what we have done with ours this year is we have actually included jokes and riddles inside we absolutely love riddles in our house they tend to drive people crazy and it's really good fun at Christmas dinner to argue over the answers so definitely have a go at making your own Christmas crackers design them however you like I have just used brown craft paper to make mine a really great way to enjoy some of the tradition of the Christmas season but without the waste next up let's talk about Christmas trees in our house we absolutely love the feel and the festive cheer that comes with a real tree and I know a lot of you out there will have always had that in your house but what we can do is change the way we think about our tree we buy locally we always support the local florist and sometimes this has become more popular over the last number of years you can actually buy trees that are say for example being sold by your local school and all the proceeds from those sales will either go to the school or to a charity that the school has chosen so that's a great way to support a local businesses and b your local community so second thing when you are finished with your tree after Christmas let's not talk about that it's a very sad time when Christmas ends but when it does come time to take down your tree a very sad day we want to make sure that we are disposing of it in the most eco-friendly way possible now sometimes local authorities will have schemes in place where they will collect your Christmas tree they will turn it into wood chippings or mulch and that is a great way to dispose of it you could also do this yourself you can chop it up and mulch it down and use it as fertilizer and compost in your own garden or a third way that you can use it is you can actually pop it up somewhere in your garden where maybe it might not be as obvious when you're just looking out into your garden in summer that there's a browning Christmas tree in your garden but bugs actually use the Christmas tree as a shelter so it becomes its own little ecosystem and its own little bug house so that's another way that you can use your tree and leading on from your tree then comes decorations at Christmas time the shops are littered with the cutest decorations that you will ever see. Honestly, I find it really hard to walk through the shops and not buy every single plush teddy bear that is sitting on the shelf. That's just how I am. I absolutely love adorable things, but the key is to remember that you probably have enough at home. So I would say try and avoid buying more decorations every year. If you are moving into a new house, if you're moving in with a significant other, or if you just feel like your Christmas decorations need a revamp, then really try and sit down and think about what kind of theme that you love so for us our Christmas tree is the same every year we have giant red baubles and we have lights and we have not bought new decorations for years so investing good quality decorations wooden if you can and a theme that you are going to love try not to feed into that advertisers trap of making you buy more stuff that you just need to find room to fit next up we're talking advent calendars something that I have loved and so many of you will love and so many of your kids will absolutely love because of course they get that little tree every single day on the countdown to Christmas but if you stop and think about the commercial side of the advent calendar, you do realize that it is something we want to avoid. They're of no real value besides containing a large amount of plastic waste, contributing to deforestation for the production of palm oil, leading to the destruction of habitats. Now, I don't want to make this video all about that, but I do want to just bring it to your attention that if you are choosing these commercial advent calendars, which we did for many years unknowingly, we are actually feeding into that deforestation. And so this is a new tip that we have implemented this year, which is to actually buy a sturdy, long lasting wooden advent calendar that will do you literally forever that you can probably pass down to your children so instead of filling your advent calendar with chocolates and treats we've actually decided to pop in a little activity or a quote or something to do together as a family go for a walk bake some cookies something along those lines so it's more again about making memories as opposed to it all being about treats and it all being about waste my next tip is really simple 
and it is to ask your family and friends to buy you zero waste gifts. It can be quite difficult for people to know what to buy a zero waster, so give them an idea of something that you would like. So for me, for example, I love to bake, so I would love to do a cake making course, or I would love us all to get together and do a family cooking course together, something along those lines. And that zero waste gift guide is on its way, so if you don't wanna miss it, then please make sure that you have your notification bell turned on down below, and you will get notified when that video goes live. My next tip goes along with zero waste gifting. So there will be presents that you will receive at Christmas time that won't be zero waste or potentially very eco-friendly. So what we would like to do is to keep all of those until after Christmas. And we're not gonna do a Rachel from Friends on it, you know what I mean? What we are going to do is make a conscious decision as to whether we want to keep those gifts or we want to do something else with those. And by something else, I mean whether somebody else in your family might like the gift, or whether you might like to donate or re-gift the item. Again, even though Christmas is a really joyous time, you can feel guilty if you don't necessarily want or love the gift that you receive from somebody, especially if it is a loved one. But I learned this when I read Marie Kondo's book, that the purpose of a gift is to be given. So once the person has given you that gift, that is them fulfilled. I thought that was a really helpful way to look at things because at the end of the day, you want to stay true to your values, true to your core ideals of living a minimalist and zero waste lifestyle. And if that gift doesn't fit with that, then that's okay. And that leads me into talking about Christmas cards, which is a festive tradition that some people absolutely love. They love to sit down with their handcrafted Christmas cards, write them up and send them in the post. It's just a really nice thing that people love to do. And if that's you, then keep doing it and keep enjoying it. But if you're somebody who feels like they just give Christmas cards because they need to give a Christmas card, then stop. You don't need to give anybody a Christmas card. There are other ways that we can send Christmas wishes without the waste that's associated with sending a card. You can send an email, you can send a text, you can arrange a time to meet up with that person and give them your Christmas wishes there in front of them in person. And again, it comes down to that guilt aspect. Cards are lovely, but oftentimes, there is no purpose for them when Christmas is done. Even two days after Christmas, the card is still sitting there and you're kind of wondering, what do I do with this? But you're also going to receive cards, it's fairly inevitable, so what are you gonna do with them? I think the best way to make use of old Christmas cards is to save them up. If there are any cute designs on them, you can actually cut them out and use them next year for your gift tags on your reusable wrapping. Store them in a box for next year and repurpose them that way. And my last sort of bonus tip for this video is to do your best to shop local. So there are a ton of online websites out there that are amazing and convenient. And that is, I think, one of the reasons why we're in the position that we're in. It's out of pure convenience. So one way that we can reduce our eco impact throughout the Christmas season is to shop locally and shop handcrafted and quality items rather than just going the easy route and shopping online. Now, I know this is not always possible for everybody, but it's just an idea that if there is a facility there for you to go to a Christmas market, or if there's a lovely little boutique shop in your area that you've never popped into, see what's in there. You might find that there are some beautiful pieces in there that you wouldn't have even thought about. Again, you're supporting your local community and local cottage industries, as opposed to those large corporations that are doing serious eco damage. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also please don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any more of my videos and I look forward to seeing you back in the next one. Bye!